Jesus said in the Great Commission that we should wait before we go out and do His vision for us, wait for the power that's coming. He was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, we, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the main thing about that is it was empowered. It was not for a gift, it was not for anything else but for the empowerment to do our mission. And when the Holy Spirit empowers you, so, and when he empowers you, see, it just gets more and more pressure inside of you, and more and more, until you just can't contain it, and it just flashes all over everybody. It just gets all over us. That's awesome. It just, you can't contain it. And when you think that you're done, you think that it's all over, you just come back with some more, and like, get some more. <laughs> So that is the best way I could think of, well actually I stole that illustration from a friend of mine, but it's the best illustration I, I saw to make it click what the Holy Spirit does. When you get saved, you get filled. But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, what happens is you get empowered to do what God has told you to do as a Christian. As a Christian, we are given a commission, a great commission to go out and reach the unsaved. And that's what the baptism is about. But, I'm sorry, I'm a little excited here. So, the, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is our guide, though. And when we let him guide us, it's like letting Jesus shine through us. But how do we know that we are living by the Spirit. The best way I found to think of living by the Spirit is you will live like Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against those things, there is no law. Now I'm, I'm gonna break down a couple of these uh, just, so we, just so we have an understanding. I've got some sheets on all of them, but it would have taken way too long to describe all of it. So, I'm going to describe love here. See, love, what it's talking about here is, it's selfless love. It's not the kind of love that the world portrays. A selfish love. No, this is a selfless love. When he says we're supposed to be a loving people, it says they will know you by your love for one another. And what that means is you will be selfless for one another. It means when, even when things, you should not be selfless. Because even as Christians, sometimes we wrong one another. Because we're human. And we make mistakes. But love is saying, you know what? I'm called to love. So I'm going to go above and beyond this hurt. And I'm going to say, I love you anyway, and I'm going to treat you with love. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes when you've got somebody in your face telling you everything that you are not, telling you you're nothing, you're worthless. It's hard to forgive when you've been hurt. When somebody's constantly hurting you, and they keep doing it. And I'm not saying that when you're acting in love, <clears throat> that you are supposed to just take letting people hurt you. That's not what I'm asking you to do. What Christ is asking you to do here is to love them anyway, to forgive them, even for what sometimes may seem unforgivable. Joy. Now, Joy is one of my favorite fruits of the Spirit because here's the thing. Joy, it doesn't mean you're always happy and giddy, okay? Joy comes from the inner feeling that Jesus has won it all. Joy comes from the fact that in the times that you are put in the corner, and just to put a, a visual thing here, when you are in that fight, spiritually, and you're getting knocked around by somebody, okay? Joy comes from when you think about 
in the end, Christ has won. Amen. See, when I think about every time that I get in a rough situation, I, I think about this. Jesus has won. When I go on from this life, I get to see my king. I get to bow before the throne and say, God Almighty, you are holy, you are almighty. I have a king that is coming back for me, that loves me. When I used to spit in his face, he loves me. I put the nail in his wrist on that cross, but you know what, he loves me. That's my joy, because he is coming back for me. And that's the joy that we have inside. It's not talking about being happy all the time. It's talking about when the circumstances are wrong, when everything looks down. You know everything's up because Christ is on your side. Amen. Because Christ is your friend. Because Christ is your friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Peace. Hallelujah. 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 I got a friend. Um, He's a Christian. He lost his job. He was threatened to, that they would take his reputation. He was getting legal allegacy. Alleg he was getting legal fines on him. Legal allegations. Sorry, I couldn't pronounce it. Um, <laughs> He even, he's an innocent, innocent man, spent a night in jail, an innocent man. He was threatened to lose his home, his vehicles, everything. They went to his church and tried to embarrass him. That man, he said, he, he looked at me and he said, you know, I have peace. For me, when he said that, I was like, you're crazy, because he was in jail. He said he laid down and he slept because he knew that Christ had out of control. Peace, peace that under, passes all understanding. That's what we're talking about, and peace. When the world comes against you, Jesus in Matthew says, there are going to be hard times. He said, <laughs> he said, but do not fear because I have overcome the world. I'm, so, I'm excited because God, we've got promises. He cannot lie, so these are true. I'm excited because I have peace, I have joy, I have love. And in all these things, I know nothing can beat me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper because Christ is an overcomer. Christ has overcome the world. Greater is he who is in the world than he is. Ooh, ha. Greater is he who is in me than who is in the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you know, that's some things that you're going to look like. But I also picked something else. Now, this is a scripture I read while I was in this last year at Pastor's Commission. And to be honest with you, this scripture at the time struck me very hard and scared me because I was like, oh wow, I need to get right. Ephesians 5, 1 through 5. It says, follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave up himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality, of any kind of impurity or of any grief, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking. You know, when I read this, it smacked me on in the face because it hadn't been but five minutes early I had just made a that's what she said joke, and I thought it was funny until I read that joke, until I read that, and I was like, oh, that joke ain't so funny anymore. Um, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, free person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. 
Now, I'm not saying that there's no mistakes, of course, because Christ died for those mistakes. He's our advocate. But what that verse is saying is get it out of your life. Stop talking impure. Stop lusting. You know, stop loving money more than God. I, before, I used to want to own a business. And the sole reason I wanted to own that business was for money. I knew I was called to preach, but I wanted a business because I wanted people to look to me. That verse right there says, I was dead wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that, you know, at the time I thought, this is a good idea. I got money, I could give it here, give it there, and I'll still have enough to take care of me and plenty run it over. I was so greedy, I was so blind, it wasn't even funny. And see, the verse is saying that if we do these things, we are idolaters, meaning we worship something other than God. And it's either we worship Him at the same level of God or more. And either way, it ain't good. See, here's the thing though. This is not just rules. See, our relationship with Christ is summarized as a marriage. See, studies show that after so long of being married, you start to resemble one another. Physically and emotionally. And you start to act like one another. In other words, when we've been in a relationship with Christ, the longer we've been in a relationship, the more we're gonna look like him, the more we're gonna talk like him, the more we're gonna think like him, and the more people are gonna see him in us. Amen. So, it's a relationship, and see, God gives us gifts. And see, the gifts, I'm talking about, it's not like when you pray for something and you get it. See, this is a totally different set of gifts. These are the spiritual gifts. And these gifts, there's gifts of ministry and there's gifts of what we're supposed to, of when God imparts something on us. See, the gifts of ministry are the prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, deacon, helper, administrator, encourager, giver, governor. All right. So, and then you have the messages of wisdom, message of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of healing. I'm just gonna go into these here, okay? A prophet is someone that God gives to talk to the church and say, hey, you're, you're not right in this area, Get it right so you can further God's kingdom. That is the biblical purpose of a prophet. And then you have the evangelist. And these are people that are, are gifted to proclaim God's message of salvation to the unsaved. Now, while there are people that are gifted to do that, they are, we are all called to talk to the unsaved. And then you have pastor. And that's the ones that are chosen to oversee the church. and They are to preach, which preaching is supposed to be aimed at emotion. But I want to get into the, the gifts of the manifestation of the Spirit. And that's a gift that's imparted by God in a situation. And these gifts, you have the gift of faith. This is supernatural faith. Gifted by the Holy Spirit, enabling a Christian to believe God for the miraculous. And then you have the gift of miraculous power. This is supernatural power to alter the course of nature, including driving out demons. And then you have the gift of healing. This is restoring somebody by supernatural means, physically or emotional. When I, I walked through a fire tunnel when I was younger, I had horrible eyesight. My glasses were really thick. I couldn't see 
worth a lick without those things. I walked through that thing and I was healed in the name of Jesus because when the spirit moves, things happen. And that's the thing, these gifts, they're not so you can say, I have a gift. They're to be, they're, they're to be exercised. And when you use them, that is it's to exercise on people to show the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God's power is far greater than any other. If you look back at Moses, he had gifted power from God. The Egyptians tried to mock it, they couldn't. They mocked it, but they couldn't do it as well. I want to get into prophecy here. Now see, prophecy is separate from prophet. Prophecy is a special temporary gift to bring a word from God under impulse of the Holy Spirit. And then you have discernment. Discernment's a very, very special gift. Discernment tells you if what was just spoken in a prophetic, or what was just spoken in a message was truly from God or from the enemy. But these gifts, God allows us to use them. God allows us to use these gifts because they are His. They are gifts that He has placed upon us. But we need the baptism. And here's the thing, the baptism, I know people that are not baptized in the Holy Spirit that are great Christians and can do great things for God. But when I see in Jesus' own words, wait for the empowerment. I want the empowerment of the Spirit. If I can have more of God, I want more of God. If I can have that extra little bit, and it ain't a little bit, the baptism, <laughs> it is something so powerful, so fireful. When I got baptized, I was on fire like crazy. I was looking at people I didn't know and speaking into their life. I would walk up to strangers and I'd say, oh, I'd reveal things in their life and they'd say, oh dear Lord. And I'm telling you now, that's why. That, that's why it's there. The baptism was not ever meant so that we could say, we have the baptism, we're so great. You're not supposed to lord over others that don't have the baptism and say, oh, I got the baptism. The baptism is to be used and to show that the kingdom of God is not silent, the kingdom of God is still advancing, and the kingdom of God is still all powerful because we have the Almighty King. Amen. Hallelujah. The baptism is something very special because it it's unique. John said, John the Baptist, said that I baptize you with water, but the one that comes after me, who I'm not fit to even touch his sins, that's saying something. John the Baptist was a pretty, he, he's really a great guy. He said, but the one that comes after me he will baptize you in fire and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 So I just want everybody to bow your heads. Okay? Now, here's the thing. The thing I, I, I care most about, and the thing that I, I have to ask here because I wouldn't feel right if I didn't ask this. And my question to you is, if there's anyone that is not in a personal relationship with Christ, please, if you will, raise your hand and we can pray. I want to pray. I want to see everyone in this room in a personal relationship. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, I want to see everyone in this room in a personal relationship because Jesus Christ, he's a friend like no other. All right, we're gonna pray for that in just a second. 
Now, if there's anybody in this room that has not been baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, as it says, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, if you will raise your hand, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, before you, before you look up, I, I got one thing to say. We're having a very special altar call tonight. It's not one where you just walk up and you raise your hand. It's not one like that. Hallelujah. This is a fire tunnel. And like I said earlier, I've had my eyes healed in a fire tunnel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've had my eyes healed in a fire tunnel. I've seen people, hallelujah, be healed at a snap of a finger because the Holy Spirit jumps on them. What a fire tunnel is, is well, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have all the leaders come up here. We're going to have two lines. And then we're going to have you all walk through. And see, before this service, we were prayed for by Grandpa Russell. For anybody that knows him? Grandpa Russell. And I'm telling you, I felt the Holy Spirit so strong there. I can't wait to feel what the Holy Spirit's going to do. So if I can have all the leaders come up and form the two lines. And I'm going to have my sister and Pastor Corey Kinnear lead, lead the altar music. See, what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to go through and we're going to put anointing oil on each one of these people's hands. And then you're going to walk through. And what happens when you walk through, I don't, I, but, I, but I want, is I want you to walk through expecting something to hit you. Because when the Holy Spirit hits you, it hits you like a rock. So when I, hallelujah. So you're going to, if I 